So I'd like to talk about how antibodies get secreted from B cells. So when we talk about secretion of immunoglobulins um, or secretion of antibodies, really that's how B cells help fight infections. They release or secrete antibodies. And right now we've only seen immunoglobulins be present on the surface of B cells. So how does a B cell go from having a membrane-bound immunoglobulin to a secreted immunoglobulin, which we commonly refer to as an antibody. So I'm showing you a drawing there of a naive B cell with immunoglobulin on its surface. Um, and again, on the last video, we talked about how the uh, constant mu and constant delta regions of the heavy chain gene locus allow you to produce IgM and IgD at the same time. And that is what you find present on the surface of naive B cells. So, and that is membrane-bound uh, immunoglobulin. So, let's say that there's an infection that this naive B cell happens to recognize. So, it has an antigen binding site with a very interesting variable region that just so happens to bind this antigen, some protein or some shape, some molecule present on the surface of this pathogen. So, what's going to happen is the B cell will go from being a naive B cell to an activated B cell. And this process is covered later in chapter nine in a little more detail. But I wanna to switch to what happens um, for this B cell in terms of how it secretes antibody. So once a B cell goes from being naive to being activated, um, it undergoes something called clonal selection, which involves lots of mitosis. So this one B cell becomes an army of B cells. Now they still only have immunoglobulins embedded in their membranes. That's not helping fight an infection. What's going to help fight the infection is if some of these cells switch to antibody secretion. So how do these cells switch to antibody secretion? That's what we're going to cover right now. So there's the heavy chain gene locus, right? And let's say we're talking about, oh, that's right, we've got to introduce something new here. Um, this involves splicing and exons. So again, recall your genetics or molecular biology information. Um, when I had introduced previously all the constant regions uh, in the heavy chain gene locus, uh, we didn't talk about exons before, but we're going to talk about exons now. So let's just focus on the constant mu region. So the constant mu region is going to give you the heavy chain constant region. So in the constant mu region, is a exon called a secretion coding exon. So it's going to have the DNA information to provide a protein region that allow IgEs to be secreted, specifically IgM. There's another exon present in the constant region of uh, constant mu that is the membrane coding exon. So it's going to have genetic information that will code for protein information that will uh, allow the uh, heavy chain to be embedded in the membrane. So let's see how a cell switches from membrane-bound Ig to secretion Ig, specifically IgM. Okay, so let's start with the B cell. And naive B cells um, and developing B cells, they're going to produce membrane-bound immunoglobulin. So how is that possible? So going back to transcription, when this gene is turned on, it's transcribed. And so we've transcribed through the VDJ region. That's going to give us the variable region of the heavy chain protein. And we transcribe through the constant region of the, um, the constant mu region, which is going to give us IgM. Now I'm drawing there exons. So we didn't show exons before. I'm giving you a little bit more detail now. So we've got the secretion coding exon and the membrane coding exon. Which one is going to get used? If we're talking about a naive B cell, alternative splicing happens that allows the membrane coding exon to be kept, the secretion coding exon to be deleted. So now when we have our mature mRNA, we've got the variable region and we've got the constant mu region containing membrane coding exon. The membrane coding exon is going to give us hydrophobic amino acids that will insert this protein into the plasma membrane of the B cell. So this region right here, that membrane coding region the, that came from the exon, the membrane coding exon, that's going to give rise to this part of the protein, the constant region of the 
um, the uh, heavy chain, and then we're talking about IgM here, so it's constant mu. And so when this um, is translated, transcribed, translated in the cell, that ends up in the membrane of the, pl of the cell, the plasma membrane. So specifically, this membrane coating exon has very hydrophobic um, uh, amino acid information in there. So the membrane coating region is very hydrophobic. So that coating region is in the MC region. And that's how um, the heavy chain protein uh, is embedded in, in the plasma membrane. Now let's say the B cell becomes activated and differentiates, turns into a plasma cell, which is the type of B cell that secretes the, an antibody. So this V cell is going to go from having membrane-bound IgM to secreting IgM. And IgM is great for combating infection, activating complement, the classical pathway, for example. So how does the cell switch from membrane-bound IgM to secreting IgM? So again, we're going to have transcription through the gene. And now we've got We've got the variable region, we've got constant mu, and we've got these two exons, the secretion coding exon, the membrane coding exon. exon. So now, during, when the cell has differentiated, it will now choose the secretion coding exon. It will get rid of the membrane coding exon. So after alternative splicing, you have a mature mRNA that has the secretion coding exon in it. So when this mRNA is translated and you make protein, the heavy chain protein, so we're making IgM here, the secretion coding exon is going to give you this region of the protein, and that's no longer going to contain, contain hydrophobic amino acids, it'll contain very hydrophilic amino acids. So this IgM molecule is not embedded in the membrane, it is secreted into the extracellular fluid. So now the cell has gone from uh, having membrane-bound IgM, and now it is secreting IgM. So that's what a plasma cell does. And then what's this IgM going to do? It's going to go and bind pathogen and do the things that IgM does, such as activate complement. We'll cover in a later video the effector functions of antibodies. So how did a cell go from making membrane-bound to make secreting antibody? It's all about alternative splicing. And I just gave you an example of alternative splicing um, that will result in secreting IgM. But it turns out cells, um, or I should say the constant regions in the heavy chain gene locus, we talked about all the different constant regions, constant delta, constant alpha, constant gamma, constant epsilon, all of them have secretion coding exons and membrane coding exons. So we're going to see later that when cells switch to making IgG, they can have IgG membrane bound on their surface, or they can secrete IgG. They can have IgA on their surface, or they can secrete IgA. And again, how does a cell switch from membrane bound to secreting an, uh, an immunoglobulin? It's all about alternative splicing, choosing between the secretion coding exon and the membrane coding exon. We'll get more into later videos about um, how a B cell switches from making IgM to IgA or IgG. That's a separate process known as isotype switching, which we will cover later.